going to begin? Finally. Not just me. Right. Uh, thanks for coming. I know it's a Saturday morning, but uh, you guys are dedicated, and uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, first, we're going to start off with uh, some needs analysis. Uh, this way, you will develop an app that is actually useful, and that's huge. You know, any uh, Joe Schmo can like down like create an app. You know, using basic you know computer science skills, I'm going to teach you in the second half of this uh, lecture. But uh, if you make a, a color changing app or something, like no one's gonna give a crap. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So basically, what Brian's gonna go through is needs analysis, really assess what's the need for the app, because uh, when you're putting in the time to code this thing up, you know, make sure that people will actually use it. And then Jane is gonna go through design. And uh, this is very important because uh, constantly engineers are, are working on this code and it takes them like months to put together a beautiful app and then it, it follows the design, the design requirements. And if the design isn't well done or if it has to be redesigned, then you lose thousands and thousands of dollars. So these steps, you know, you might want to like jump right into the code, but it's crucial to, to know these steps first. Um, and that's the difference between a good engineer or a good uh, app developer and a bad app developer. Um, all right, so uh, I'll pass it off to them. But then uh, the second half, we have uh, Annie Lane and uh, Timothy Chong, and they're going to go through uh, the Xcode uh, programming of the uh, iOS app. And um, yeah, so I'll give it to Brian. Well, good morning. Morning. <laughs> okay, so first thing, like I said before, we kind of want you to have your computers away at this point so we can see all of your bright faces on this early morning. And yeah, so this part we're trying to get as interactive as possible to get you all all be excited about this because it's really important. So who here was at who here was not at the orientation, any of the orientations? Okay. So I'm glad most of you are. For those of you that weren't, um, basically needs analysis is the difference between having an app that people are going to absolutely love and want to use every day, or having an app that maybe you'll serve the purpose that you originally intended, but people, it's not really meant for the right person, or it's not really designed for the right person in mind for everything that they could possibly do. So um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to first run through a general, uh, general process of doing the three important steps of needs analysis. And then we're actually going to go to an app that we did last year for a company, a real company that we made an app for last year and run through the process of that again with all of you. And hopefully you guys are going to be needs analysis thing and designing an app today. And I think needs analysis thing is a word. Um, okay. The idea is that this is supposed to be interactive. So just feel free, like we want you to talk, we want you to participate. Um, if you don't, we'll drag you up here and make you participate in front of everyone else. So we brought candy to encourage you. If you don't like Star Wars, I'm really sorry. But that's what we have. Um, so yeah, so just this should be, Brian will go over the basics. So Brian and I are kind of working on this together because needs analysis and design are very intertwined. Um, so Brian will go over the basics, and then from then on, we're just going to use your brains, not ours. All right. So how our club works is after the initial meeting, once you guys have all been assigned <coughs> slash chosen your teams, um, it's not one or the other because you choose your top three and then we make the teams depending on skill level and trying to make well-balanced teams. So once you're assigned a team, you're going to know who your organization is. And I say that because it's a very important thing to research your organization beforehand. That way, when you're actually meeting with your organization, you're not wasting time figuring out the very basic things about their, what they do and how they do it. So it's a very good thing to come well prepared to these meetings and 
really just make them as prepped as possible. All right, so the first, now that you're sitting down or Skyping or whatever with your client, the first main question you need to figure out is what do they want from their app? So different companies, this answer is much more varied than you'd think. Some companies come with a really specific goal in mind. Um, like, I want the app to do this, 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 and this. And other companies come and say, oh, I just really want to get mobily connected, and it would be really cool to have this, and it might be neat to have this, but I don't know if that's possible. So it's really good to just have what your company's initial thoughts of this app is, and always keep that in mind for the entire process of what we make. Um, the next two big questions are, what are the company's goals and what are their problems? So by asking them this, this is taking the next step in uh, figuring out exactly what you're going to be putting on this app. So, uh, let's see, where am I? All right, so by asking what their goals are as an organization, you already know what they want in the app, but by knowing these goals, you can kind of project further and come up with new ideas that they hadn't thought of to put in this app. Because we're supposed to be the experts in this, so we're supposed to know, oh, well, your company wants to do such and such, but you didn't even say that. We can add that into our app and add it as an additional functionality and make it really cool. And companies really like it when you do that. Also, problems, obviously, you know exactly what to stay away from. But also with problems, you can find out additional things that the app can help with. So if the company is having has a lot of student volunteers and they're having trouble commuting with their, communicating with their student volunteers, you can make it a part of the app to connect to those student volunteers and make that a big functionality. Finally, the last very big question is who is the company's target audience? So this is very important to know from the get-go because you're designing this app for someone. You're not just designing an app and making it as cool as possible. It's kind of a trap a lot of people fall into is they design something as if they're designing it for themselves. And granted, some of the time, people like us might be the target audience. There's a good amount of time where, say, you're developing an app for a crowd that's 60 plus. If you're developing for a crowd that's 60 years old, 60 years and older, you're going to want things like a much more intuitive um, flow of the app, really big buttons and writing, so they don't have to squint to see it. So just basic things as well as major functionality can be extremely affected by the target audience. So now we are going to. If you want to pull up the um, website. Uh, red, red, blue. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the this is actually the company that Jane and I made an app, we're on the team for, that made an app for last year, is called Red, <coughs> Red, and Blue. So, I'm supposed to research it right. <laughs> okay, so, so right now we're doing some, some basic research. Um, so this is just their general rep look website. Um, so looking this up, our mission, Red, Right, and Blue, will use technology and social media to connect civilians with the men and women from the United States military <coughs> in order to promote goodwill and civic engagement, um, as well as cultivate healthy interest in the actions of the military in the military at home and abroad. Um, our strategy, using a smartphone application we are currently developing, we will enable civilian users unprecedented ease of communicating with military <coughs> service members. Is our hope that you can read the rest? <laughs> okay, so now that we've learned a little bit about the company, I 
obviously you're probably going to go further than this, see what they've done, what their projects are. But we'll stick to this for now. So now we're going to go into our first meeting with the client. And how we're going to do this now, as a group, Jane is Casey, the president. Well, in this case, it's the president. Sometimes you're not always going to get the president of the company. But Casey, the president of Red, Right, and Blue, is right here. And we can ask her things about her company. So what's the first thing we ask? How's it going? <laughs> Excellent question. <laughs> okay. It's going wonderfully. I'm about to have an app made for me for free. It normally costs a lot of money. <laughs> I love your honesty, Mrs. President. <laughs> you can call me Casey. I'm cool with that. Yes, my real name's Jane. Just so, like, this doesn't get me. <laughs> my name's Jane. I'll be around a lot, so you should get to know me. It's okay. You know, it'll be cool. It'll be coffee, whatever. But right now, my name's Casey. Okay, so the first big question is what is it you want from this app, Jane? Casey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Um, so, uh, my goal for this organization is that I'm trying to start a nonprofit. I'm very interested in the military. My family, I have a lot of family members who are in the military. Um, and I don't think that citizens are well enough connected to the military. You know, if, if you know someone in the military, you can people write you letters and you kind of understand. But overall, there's a pretty large disconnect between the average citizen and the US military. They don't really know you know, each other. They, they don't really interact unless you know someone. Um, and I would like that to change. I want people to know more about the military, um, and I want them to have feel that, like they can have a connection. OK, so more specifically, what is it you want from creating an app? So my idea behind this, why I'm coming to you, is because I think a really good way to connect citizens would be to have them send anonymous messages, um, not even very long, maybe the length of a tweet or you know, your average text message, um, just saying, hey, I really support what you're doing, thank you so much, um, and just give them a way to communicate with military servicemen. I've talked to the USO about this, which is like the major, it's not a corporation, but like organization that um, works with soldiers and works with like helping families of soldiers and they have said that if I have an app developed they will give me the email addresses to military personnel and I can send them emails. Um, so I really think this would be a great way to do it. Um, so my general idea about the app would be to have obviously like a, something where you could write an email in it um, and also I want to make sure that these are appropriate. I don't want people, you know, abusing this. So there would need to be some sort of censorship to make sure there was, you know, obviously no swearing, no hate, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So who wants to summarize the general idea of what she wants from that? There's candy. What's the important information? One piece at a time is perfectly wonderful. Okay, so by the way, I, just 
letting you all know now, I'm going to butcher the spelling of every word I write on the board. Um, okay, so let's try to get more broad than that. Just very, very basic. What does she want out of this? Good. Almost like a like a survey type thing where you could send short messages. Where are these messages going to? Service so members to connect civilians to the army. Good. Alright, any more big topics? We'll get more details soon. Okay, so next, what is the next question we ask here? What's the second bullet point on my list? What are the goals? Correct. Would you be interested in something that set up a system, like a point system, so civilians that wrote many letters to, or many like blurbs to soldiers would get points, and the more, po the more um, letters they wrote, the better? Yeah, I'm really glad you asked with that. I totally forgot. Uh, I think that an incentive-based system would work really well. Uh, I'm not so interested in people really caring about the military, and that's why they're doing this. Um, it's more about education and getting them just interested, and you know, maybe if they email a soldier, then they'll be interested, like they'll look some things up about them, like maybe where are our troops even fighting right now, because a lot of people don't know that. Um, so I think like a point system, incentives, I was actually considering, I'm trying to talk to American-based companies right now, uh, like Target and Ford, big companies like that, um, that I hope, like, I hope that they maybe will sponsor me, and you know, so that I could do even real incentives, so like, Ten dollar gift certificates to Target if you send a thousand messages, um, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I do want to send a system. Thank you for talking about that. 
Okay, so summing that up, what do we want to say? Yeah. Um, so you studied the one the military personnel to actually respond to the emails. So how do you expect the users to learn from that experience? Um, so I was hoping that in other parts of the app, there could be some education. So maybe every time you send an email, a little factoid pops up uh, about the military. Like, did you know that 20,000 troops are stationed here right now? Um, or other interesting things like that. And then maybe an even a whole page in the app that was just dedicated to education <coughs> would be really great. Yeah. Uh, would you be interested in like a map that um, you got to pick which region of the world that, that your message got sent to? That's a really cool idea, yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Would the, would the user be able to see like other messages that were sent by other people so they have an idea of what they want to say? Um, I, I haven't thought about them before, but that'd be cool um, to get kind of a general idea in case like maybe they don't know what they want to write yet. Mm -hmm. If they're interested in connecting, they can see the kinds of things that other people are writing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything to put the soldiers in? They log on the app and accept the emails, or is it just in their mailbox? Um, so most soldiers don't have access to mobile devices. Um, they have, I mean, there are cell phones, but those are more for phone calls home. Um, there's not a ton of, like, there's not internet, like, a lot of places they don't have internet access. When they're on their base, they have internet access. Um, but they're probably, I don't want this to be communication back and forth. That there's some, there are programs that are already like that. There's one online. It's like an email system where soldiers. It's like a pen pal system, and they do it a lot with elementary school kids. Uh, but those don't always work, um, and people get disinterested. What are you supposed to do after you get your second email, like email back? You don't have a lot of comment with this person. Probably it can get awkward, kind of weird writing. Um, so I'm more interested in just like a one way train of emails, um, and it would just show up in the soldier's inbox that they can check when they're on their computer or whatever internet device they're using on the base. Is there like one email per soldier if you don't send out like one to four soldiers or something? Um, I didn't think about sending it to multiple soldiers, uh, but that's actually not a bad idea. I guess it would depend on how many like people actually end up using the app. If if like very few people were using it, which I'm hoping won't be the case since you guys are going to do an amazing job developing it. Um, but if I had a significant number of emails that weren't getting messages, then I would probably have it distributed to more if that's possible. I don't really know anything about app building, so yeah. Uh, if you can do that, that's great. Um, but if it would just be one, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to stop you right now. This is very good. But, so, now let's get to, are there any <laughs> problems that you guys can think of with this? Or just ask her in general. <coughs> is, is only a, are only a certain amount of soldiers going to be using this? Or do we assume that most soldiers would want to do this? Um, so, this is going to be a volunteer thing for them. Uh, so, the USO... Is going to give the is going to do a survey. I don't really know how they communicate um, with the soldiers, but they it's going to be like a sign up. So soldiers can sign up to participate in this app and have their email used to this app. Um, there are definitely going to be actually I shouldn't say soldiers because soldiers only applies to the army. If you're a marine and you call them a soldier, in trouble. So there's a factoid for you right there that you can put in the app. Um, but yeah, so military personnel will sign up for this uh, and. I don't know what the response is going to be. You know, there might be a lot of um, military personnel who get interested in it and want to use it. And if you know, one of their buddies gets it, and then they're like, "Oh, that's so cool! I want to have it too." Um, then there'll be a lot. Uh, I'm not really sure at this point, and I don't think it. The I'm not really all that concerned with like what the message like how the military personnel are like affected by that. It's a great like part of the app that they get to have this message that encourages them, but it's more about getting the citizen interested and educated. So. Well, that's okay. How do you plan
plan on like letting people know about it um, since you just started. Are you talking about, about, civi about the app. civilians or civilians? civilians? Um, so I have a website and a blog right now going. Um, once I get sponsorships, that should hopefully happen much on, on a much greater scale, like advertising and that kind of stuff. Um, so overall, I'm just trying. I, I'm like this is brand new for me, and obviously I'm not. I don't have the app yet, so I can't do like a ton of marketing. But I'm hoping that once the app gets off the ground, I'll, I'll be doing marketing and getting people interested. And also, there are a lot of groups. Um, like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Wounded Warrior. Um, but they do. They support um, players who have been wounded. Um, and there's definitely some support there. There are groups that can reach out to me and be like, "Hey, put my icon on your website." It's a really cool thing, helping out the military and the Um, it's not really a question, just for concerns about, like, um, the censorship and the anonymous, would that be under concerns? Um, sure. Um, so, at this point, well, this is a little different because we're just starting off now and we're kind of condensing everything into one. But, so to start off, what we really want to do is get an idea of the company. Once we have a good idea of the company, we can start coming up with ideas and things like that for the app. Um, I mean, it's okay to throw them out and just see what she, she thinks of things. Yeah, that's, so when you're doing needs analysis, a little side note, I'm Jane again. I, should, I was going to get a sign so that I could like, take on. But anyway, take it off to put it on. Okay, anyway. Um, so needs analysis is more about finding the goals and the problems of the organization. So uh, what problems does the organization have? A problem right now that I have is I have no money. I don't have an app yet, so I can't get the email addresses already. Those are, so when you're talking to your client about needs analysis, um, those are more of the things you want to be concerned with. At the same meeting, you can do you can already start throwing ideas out about the app because it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to keep meeting with the client constantly every time you have a question. Um, but we're looking right now in like two seconds, well not two seconds. Um, the next step is going to be doing like goals for the app. So all of the different parts we want and then problems we foresee with the app. So that's going to be censorship. Like how are we going to do it? Um, so we do that next. But since this was like, since we're kind of like simulating a real client meeting, all of these questions are that we're fielding right now are fine. Okay, so let's move on to the last question, which, what is your target audience, <coughs> Casey? Um, so I kind of want this to be, since it's about education, uh, I don't think we, I'm really all that concerned with older populations. I think it should be usable for older populations, um, since I know there are a lot of like moms and dads who have sons and daughters in the military and would love, even if they're not sending it to their own children, they would love to support the military. Um, but since this is mainly about educating the public, I'm aiming for more, you know, 16, 17 year old teenagers. I don't want to be really younger than that because then I think this is just going to be more of a game and really important and doesn't matter. Um, so 16 to 17 year old teenagers to probably like, 35 year olds would be my main target audience. I mean, I really, what I really want is just the largest audience possible, um, but I think that's maybe a good range. All right. Um, well, I think I'm going to cut this off now because we're taking a while doing this, which is good. But so the next step in needs analysis that we go through is in. Uh, doing what we call a case scenario. So basically what this is, I already explained this to most of you who are at the orientation. Um, also, there's a bunch of seats in the middle here for if you guys want to sit. Yeah, we have two seats in this row, three seats in this row, and one seat in this row. And then these two you guys can take two. Yeah. So we'll sit in real seats. Yeah, just take this time to actually get a seat because it's kind of unreasonable to not have a seat if we have seats open. Unless you really like the floor, we're not keeping you up. <laughs> uh, well, the
everyone else, you could stand up and stretch a second, because I know I kind of like stretching in the middle of lectures, and that's generally not acceptable. That's acceptable but, here. But it's acceptable here. <laughs> so. That's really boring. There we go. Chicken, chicken. Oh. Oh. is the case scenario. So basically, the idea of this is we're going to be creating a fictional person who is within our target audience range. And basically, we're going to be running through the entire experience for them of what this app is trying to do, but without the app. So in this case, we're going to be making someone, creating a person, a very specific person, who's going to be, we'll say, writing a letter to a military personnel. <clears throat> and so the idea is to do before, during, and after. We're going to be first figuring out all of the literal actions that he'll be taking. Then the next step is to figure out what they're thinking. And then finally, we're going to figure out what their emotions are during each step. So this may sound kind of tedious or strange, but it's actually a really important thing to see and really clarifies specific parts in this process that are really stressful for the person or parts where they're really excited about doing something. And it's just, you really want to either correct those in the app or exemplify those parts where they're really excited and make them more excited than doing whatever they do. Um, so. Just one before we start this, this isn't like they're already using an app. This is what they would do if there was no app in place. Um, so for this example, we're going to do, they're going to write a normal email or a normal letter to a military person. Does that make sense? Yeah? And we're going to start with a profile. So before you go on to how they're using it, we're going to put a real face on this person. Make it fun. Last night we were running through this, and we made a really inappropriate human being. And it was great. So <laughs> feel free. OK. So what's the name of our person? Jane. No, 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 no. That could end poorly. That could end so poorly. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne? Wonderful. I like it. Alright, I'm going to assume that they're male. Is that is that correct? No. Female Bruce Wayne? Great. Okay, female Bruce Wayne. Alright, someone, how old are they? 22. Good. Fits our brackets. Alright, so what does this person do? What does Bruce Wayne the female, <laughs> who's 22 years old, what do they do? Do they go to school? Do they have a job? Works at McDonald's? <laughs> McDonald's? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are they like a manager at McDonald's or drive up with them? Cashier. Cashier? So it's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> Can right. everybody see this? I know it's like kind of. I'm sorry. I can. Alright, so next. Uh, what's their address? Um, what's their What's their living situation? Where are they living right now? Okay. So, so this could be crazy, but you have to keep in mind that it has to be. 
possible. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully we're not going to have a homeless person. Or actually, homeless woman. So you have to think, this person has to have an iPhone that they can use in general. Someone. So the app isn't created yet, but they have to have the possibility to oh. use the app. It should be funny, but it should be someone who you actually imagine using the app. Mama's basement. Someone who's in your car. What? Mama's basement. What basement? Mom's basement. Mom's basement. Mom's basement. <laughs> okay. Apartment was good, but mom's basement. <laughs> <laughs> The worst part is I know like 33 year old people who are still living with moms, so anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, where is, where's this person live? Geography? North Give me a state. Dakota. Dakota? Wait. North Dakota. North Dakota. <laughs> More specific. <laughs> iPhone 3. iPhone 5. 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 Okay. Wait, which color is it? And two other great things. Oh, wait, time out, time out. This is really important. What color? Pink. <laughs> hey, is there pink. Like red. 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 Is it red or pink? Red. 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 Yellow. Pink. 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 So a couple other, you have to think about things that are applicable to using an application. So one thing, what's their personality? Are they generally a happy person? Are they really upset about things? Do they get depressed? <laughs> <laughs> You will define your personality. That's good. That's good. Where's the candy I'm just going to shower you with Starburst. It's going to happen. And it's going to hurt. <laughs> I'll be gentle. Okay, so personality, family in the military. Um, are they happy with their life right now? No. 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 They're not. <laughs> 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 Is this I mean, like clinical depression level girl. or just like. I think wow. We're verging on clinical depression. That's actually kind of important. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Alright, and uh, right, other things that are really specific to using an iPhone app, are they technically sad? Do you really don't like the UI OS? You should write that down. Is it really frustrating with the transition from the old iOS to the new one? Alright. So, so they have a technological background. All right, so she's, she's been playing on her iPhone for a really long time. Okay. Yeah, so That's good to know. Um, is, can you guys think of anything else really related to the apps, or really related to technology or something like that? She wants to apply to ITT technical. <laughs> <laughs> so she wants to get more into the tech field. Okay. Get candy for that. Try to move up to McDonald's. When, yeah. she uses, when she uses an app, she wants to be a quick experience. She doesn't want to be like, tied down. She's a busy woman. Okay. <laughs> so, generally in this, generally in this exercise, I like where you're going with this, but we want to try to be specific in describing the person. So, instead of saying that, simplify it down to she's a busy person. She doesn't like to spend a lot of time on it. But that doesn't set her profile. You still get a Star Wars stuff. She's taking care of it. <laughs> so that doesn't fit the profile? Okay. What doesn't fit the profile? Her being busy all the time, considering she's a. She's got to work a lot of hours yeah. at McDonald's. Wait, does she have she's two jobs? She's trying to move out of her freaking mother's basement. <laughs> <laughs> she's just being really funny. Because why does Bruce Wayne is she? Did you miss that part? No, oh, wait, what? <laughs> Or exhausted. Like, by the time she finally gets home from work, if she's working, like, 
Okay. 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 I think we're pretty good. Is there, is there any other pressing matters about Bruce Wayne that we need to put on here? Downloads and deletes a lot of apps. I like that. Okay. Wow. That's a good one. Oh, almost at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Alright guys, the projector's broken, and the meeting's <laughs> over. Alright, I think that's pretty good. I like it. We, we have our, our person, Chris Wayne, 22. You know, McDonald's. I think we, we got to know her pretty well. Does right. everyone feel personally connected to Bruce Wayne? No? Yes? Hello? Yes? 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 All right, so the next step what we're going to do is we have to define the <laughs> literal actions that she's going to be taking when she's writing. Do we want to do writing a letter to a military person or writing one of them? Email? Okay. So the literal actions that she's going to be taking. So beforehand, what's she doing? Do we want to say she's at work right now, she's just getting off the ship? Or do we want to say it's lunch time? Or do we want to say she's working? Okay, so she just got off on break. Um, how many hours did she work before that? That's a lot of hours. No break in 14 hours? I think we have to go under four. <laughs> Alright, we'll go six hours. Six hours. Um, let's see. Any other literal actions she's going to be taking before this? She's going to be eating her lunch at this time. Okay. Eating food. Okay. Okay. We get to take some food. Where is she? Break room. Break room. Break room inside the building. I don't know. I feel like in her car. Go inside. But she's just chilling out in her car. She's driving. She's driving. She should be ready. She's not trying to be. Okay. Alright, so during, what's she doing? <laughs> She's sending an email to a military carrier personnel. How is she doing this? Baseball. There's Wi-Fi. There's Wi-Fi. She's got Wi-Fi. She's got Wi-Fi. Alright, so let's start off basic. She's on her phone. She's sending it through her iPhone. Did she have to log on to her email so she used the mail app? How did she get the email address? We're making up this story. Someone should know. She, it's only like her brother is in the military, so she has a personal connection. Did you email your brother? <laughs> Okay. Emailing her brother in the military. Um, what's her relationship with her brother? Alright, um, any other literal things she's going to be doing? What being like grease off her hand? Sorry? She's still eating. What being the french fry grease off her hand? Okay. Good. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anything else? Things that she's literally doing. She's sitting down in her car, writing this email. That's about it. Alright. Alright. Um, Did you have to log in to her email? No, no, no. on my Okay. Um, Afterward. Afterward. 
back going back to work. Going back to work?
Francis on the thoughts after. Uh, will her brother reply to her email? Yeah. <coughs> oh, this is not bad. Okay, anything else? Anything for any part of this? We gotta think of what emotions her emotions before, are. Emotions before, we have another emotions before. <coughs> Um, wondering about soldiers or military personnel who don't have family that spend their breaks sending emails. Which is spend their breaks. Sorry. Think about the soldiers with family who don't communicate as much. Okay. I like that. She is lonely, which causes her to send a message. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not good that she's lonely. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll do these last two, and then we're gonna move on. So, first, uh, maybe she wants a brother uh, to help her on a boyfriend. <laughs> brother, yeah, she needs a wingman. She wants a wingman. <laughs> 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 censored and to connect with military personnel. Her goals is to generate a connection and interest in the military. Um, she wants incentives and education involved in this. And well this was an afterthought of having a math and geography function. Um, problems and concerns. Uh, that this should be more about civilians than the military um, she's having problems with PR and advertising, and her target audience is for the younger side of the population from around 16 to 35 years old. So we got all that, keep it all in mind. Next we did our case scenario. We came up with Miss Bruce Wayne. Um, she's 22 years old, works at McDonald's, mom's basement. I think we all know her pretty well by now. Um, okay, so going through this whole process, she's in her car eating fries on break. She's tired, she wants to talk, wants a friend to talk to, um, eats fries and goes back. And wondering about her brother, and kind of feeling guilty, feeling like she wants an emotional connection with other people who are doing the same thing as her. Um, during, she's on the phone using the mail app. She's emailing her estranged brother, and she has recent fingers. So she's thinking, what is my brother doing? How do I spell this? Um, I want to know more about the military. Where are they? Where's my brother right now? And are other families out there? Are there other families out there that are similar to her own? And then after, she's going back to work, checks voicemail, cleans her screen. Um, She's thinking, she's really thinking about what happens to this message after she sends it. Um, is my brother going to see this? Is he going to reply? Does he care? Um, being monitored. Um, and afterwards, she's relieved of the connection. But I think also to go along with those thoughts, we should think she's kind of feeling some anxiety towards what happened with her message. I think that's fair to say. Okay. All so right. now? Yeah. I think we should do magic time. We should do one break and then do magic time. Okay. All right, so we're gonna have a five minute break. We're gonna stretch your legs, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, whatever you want to do. We're gonna come back, we're gonna do design. <coughs> 